DuPonte onstage presentation is made possible with generous support from Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences, Clark Insurance, Drum and Drum Real Estate, First National Wealth Management, Frost Gully Violins, Highland Green, Kevin McElroy Violins, Les Fossils Restoration Resources, McCandless and Coburn Attorneys, Management Accounting, Now You're Cooking, Stars Fine Jewelry, Thornton Oaks Retirement Community, Wood Sound Studio, and from individual supporters like you. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm Suzanne Nance, and I'll be your host for this new wonderful series of digital concerts presented by the DePonte String Quartet. For the past eight months, the DePonte String Quartet, like so many performing arts organizations worldwide, has seized the opportunity to pivot from live concerts to online musical performances. Since March of 2020, they've hosted weekly live happy hour sessions on Zoom, featuring musical stars from Maine and beyond, and informal mini concerts on YouTube with solos, duos, and trios performed by members of the quartet and some very special guests. Now these programs have been offered at no charge with the hope that the DePonte Quartet could offer a welcome respite from the isolation felt by COVID-19. The DePonte String Quartet is now embarking on a brand new socially distanced kind of format, full length quartet pieces performed in a more formal presentation. These programs and others are only made possible by the generous support of music lovers like you. I hope you'll consider making a contribution right now at DePonte.org. Your gift will make a big difference for this very special ensemble. You can make your gift at DePonte.org. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to turn it over to one of the members of the DePonte String Quartet to tell you more about what we're going to hear together and I hope you enjoy it. When Beethoven published his first symphony in 1801, music lovers expected its opening phrase immediately to establish the new work's key. Listening for the first time, Viennese audiences were shocked at its opening chord progression. perhaps was designed to confuse them. The fourth chord formed a deceptive cadence instead of returning down the fifth to the home key, then continued down the circle of two more fifths. It had never been done before in an introductory phrase. Musical pundits wrote scathing and laudatory reviews alike about that opening for the next 40 years. Friedrich Chopin conceived the slow, uh, slow movement of his cello sonata, Opus 65, published 45 years later, patterned on the same chord progression. Beethoven's first symphony sounded relatively tame in comparison to Richard Wagner's harmonic progressions. That's why we tend to think there was a lot of daring musical development between Beethoven and Wagner. It's how music history is usually presented, but it's untrue. In 1783, 16 years before Beethoven wrote that symphony, Mozart composed a string quartet with an opening section surpassing in harmonic complexity anything written until Wagner, with exceptions like certain motets by Don Carlo Gesualdo from the early 17th century, or the overture to Haydn's Oratorio, The Creation. Haydn incidentally based that overture on this same quartet, which Mozart had dedicated to him. So what's going on in the opening of the Dissonance Quartet? For any work in C major, it begins innocuously enough with a simple pulse on C natural, the key note. By its second note, A flat, 
listener's expectations become confused because C major gets eliminated. The two remaining harmonic po possibilities become either A flat major or F minor. Of those two, F minor seems more probable. From there, the music can proceed easily enough to a G seventh then to the home key. By the th third note, E flat, F minor is also gone, leaving A flat major as the quartet's apparent opening chord. For a work written during the 18th century in C major, it seems an improbably distant key. Then by its fourth pitch, G natural, we realize that the second note, the A-flat, was actually only a chromatic embellishment of this new G. So now the question becomes whether we're entering C minor. But again, no. With the G natural, Mozart also sounds an exquisitely high A natural, in this way beginning to construct a sequence. This music comes back a whole step lower. in a way that's actually far more daring than anything that would be written until 1859. In fact, it's both thematically and functionally so close a musical construction to the Liebestod from Wagner's Tristan und Isolde, that the resemblance very like the slow movement of Chopin's cello sonata to the opening of Beethoven's First Symphony, can't possibly be coincidental.
Thank you.
This DuPonte on-stage presentation is made possible with generous support from Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences, Clark Insurance, Drum and Drum Real Estate, First National Wealth Management, Frost Gully Violins, Highland Green, Kevin McElroy Violins, Les Fossils Restoration Resources, McCandless and Coburn Attorneys, Management Accounting, Now You're Cooking, Stars Fine Jewelry, Thornton Oaks Retirement Community, Wood Sound Studio, and from individual supporters like you. Thank you. <laughs>